Good morning, traders. Chris Buss here with Traders Profit Compass with another edition of Before the Bell for Monday, May 23rd, 2022. It is 6.25 a.m. as I'm starting the video. If you're new to the channel, please run your player at 1.5x for maximum efficiency. Looking at futures real quick, uh, Bitcoin's up uh, 4%. That's a real good sign for a rally it's been tracking really really closely to the nasdaq and other risk assets uh, uh really for quite a while now so that's a good sign oil up 1.2 percent equities about uh 0.5 to 0.75 percent gold's up one uh one percent copper six tenths nat gas is the only red i see on futures down about one percent on the macro front today, not a lot going on. We got the Chicago Fed coming out this morning. Really, the big items this week are uh, the FOMC notes on Wednesday at 2 p.m. and then GDP on Thursday morning. After the bell today on earnings, we've got Zoom. But if you go to the uh, website on the blog site this morning, I've got the uh, entire earnings calendar for the week. We've got uh, quite a number of uh, marquee names on there that you want to pay attention to nvidia costco uh, quite a, quite a number of names so uh, let's get into the charts this morning and see what we've got in store on friday we had the early morning sell-off and then the rebound into the close uh, who knows if all that was may opex generated activity you always have to kind of wonder on a friday options expiration what's uh what's real and what's manufactured but it is what it is uh, uh i thought it was interesting here on friday on our put to call extremo meter that they were buying a lot of uh puts on friday i kind of view that as a, a, a contrarian indicator uh, <clears throat> so uh, on the blog site this morning I have a lot of uh, <coughs> added information on building a little case for a bounce here but we'll see how it goes so a lot of puts being bought on uh, Friday one of the charts we have not looked at in uh, a number of weeks is the number of stocks over their 50 day moving average this is the uh on the uh nyse you can see here we're down here bouncing along the lows of around uh, 20 percent actually about 18 percent and you can see back in time it really does not get a whole lot lower than this uh very often you know this was covid this was the Q4 2018 uh, massive rug pull. This was Volmageddon in early 18. So it really doesn't happen that often. Uh, I think this is poised for a bounce. Really not getting a lot of help on the oscillators right here in the middle of the range. What I'm hoping for is for this bounce to materialize get a push up into a well-defined resistance zone on price while at the same time being overbought on the oscillators right here in the middle though really not given much of a read same thing on the on the uh, on the NIMO the NYSE oscillator right here in the middle not helping us a whole lot uh, vol term inversion you can see the uh, three month versus one month is not in the fear zone uh, neither is the ultra short term one one month versus uh, nine month but uh, coming off the lows and heading a bit higher uh, Bitcoin we've been talking about up four thousand dollars today uh, as we as we uh, speak uh, gave us a little look below on this pennant uh, up this morning. I, I think that's a good leading indicator 
for how the day is going to go. Uh, when Bitcoin is down, we usually have a down day. When Bitcoin is up, we either hold our own or go higher. There's a really interesting graph on the blog this morning showing an overlay of Bitcoin and financial conditions. And financial conditions are, are diving to the lows while Bitcoin remains, even though we've had a, you know, a sell-off. In relation to where financial conditions are, Bitcoin should be a lot, lot lower. And don't forget, um, we've got quantitative tightening starting June 1st, and we've got another 50 bips of Fed rate hike, hiking on board for their meeting in June. So financial conditions are going to tighten further from here. And, and that just does not bode well for uh, assets like uh, Bitcoin. Moving on to SPY. Here's the weekly chart. Wanted to give you a read. We had a reach down uh, last week, down to 380 on, on SPY. We got the uh, bounce into the close on Friday. Uh, the question now is, I mean, how many weeks in a row can we really keep going down? We're at... Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven weeks in a row down. I, I heard the somewhere, I don't know, financial media and Twitter or something, you know, worst since 1932. Uh, I didn't independently verify that, but uh, been a long time since we've been down that many weeks in a row. Uh, I think this thing is ripe to... Uh, give some kind of a bounce, whether it's a, a one-week bounce, a two-week bounce, a three-week bounce. You know, squeeze out some of the people that have been riding down short and give some life to the bulls that think the bottom is in. I don't think that. I think we're going lower. But, you know, we're here to trade. And depending on your time frame, you know, you can recycle out of your shorts and either just step aside and wait for the bounce to conclude or try to try to game that bounce over the next uh, however many days. Now, remember, uh, as we move on to the SPY daily chart, we're just coming off a bounce. Uh, uh, not last week, the week before, we had a nice little rally from... Uh, 385, we got up here into the 408, 409 area, and that thing failed with uh, an epic, uh, that 4% down day left a real mark on the charts. I thought, and I had hoped, that this was the bounce that had a chance of getting up in here into this big resistance zone and possibly even breaking out. So I got my uh, I got my butt spanked on that idea. And the thing is on these on these rallies, it's it's tempting to pile in um, you know to, to capture that. Uh, but in this high volatility thing, uh, probably a better idea to be, somewhat cautious in the sense of your positioning you know rather on the on the light side versus the you know all in kind of a mentality because i mean there's just no way to react on a gap down and a four percent down day if you are loaded to the gills with longs so that's I mean, that's bear market behavior, right? Nothing is easy. Rips come fast. Dips come fast. Everything is on an accelerated pace with high volatility. And you get on the wrong side of that. Even if you've had, you know, gains during this period of time, it only took one day to erase all that. And, that, and that's uh, 
you know, it's damaging to the P&L. It's damaging to your trading psychology. It, uh, you know, it, it slaps you into reality very, very quickly. So now we had the look below on Friday, big hammer candle. I think you can use uh, this uh, 390 area as your pivot today. If we can hold 390 uh, and grind higher, uh, that would be a good first move. Uh, notice the high on Friday here at uh, what was the high? 397. That was basically a touch of the declining eight day. So job one is to uh, jump above the eight day. Uh, if you can get above 400, all the better. Here we are on the 60 minute chart. You can see right here this pivot at uh, 390 seems clear as day. And then it's just the way the it's just the way the uh, line, the uh, levels line up. I think you can use five dollar increments as your targets. You know, get above three ninety, look for three ninety five. Get above three ninety five, look for four hundred. And then uh, once we get up into this level, uh, four oh five. But we'll also have the uh, downtrend line to contend with and if we jump back over on the daily chart we've got the declining 20 day coming in at 407 so that will be a level two uh, a level also to be aware of in uh, you know in your active trading today again here on the QQQ weekly we had a reach down to this 50% uh, level on the Fib retracements on the weekly, we got down to, to 280 and got a bounce. So again, here, you know, seven, eight weeks, consecutive down weeks. I think this thing is due for a bounce. Really, any bounce is nothing unless it can get back over 310. I mean, you can see right here that big volume over price bar comes in right about that level. On the daily chart, we've got, uh, I think you can use 290 as your pivot with a first target of 298 and then 305, 310. And then this big zone here that we've been calling out for quite a while now, both on the downside and the upside as an important zone is this 317.35 to 3.22. That would, you know, a run from, from uh, 290 to, let's just call it 3.20, would probably fit the bill as far as, uh, you know, a good kickback rally. And then if it, if, if, it, if it were to get beyond 3.22, then it's really got, uh, I think would really pick up a lot of FOMO traders that they were skeptical, 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 get this breakout, you know, get some rocket fuel above 322 and, you know, move higher from there. But a lot, I mean, a lot of, a lot of work to do just to get back up to 317. Uh, so keep that in mind. Um, uh, also wanted to point out, I don't have it highlighted on the chart, but just to show you, and if you're an aspiring chartist, something to always look for. Always keep in mind the posture of RSI and PPO momentum in relation to price. So here we are at a low at 285. We're at a low level on PPO, low level on RSI. And so we had our little rally. They of course faded that, made a new low on Friday, but with momentum higher and RSI marginally higher, that's your bullish divergence. And if you're studying your candlesticks, on Friday, you can see we spent 
four hours uh, testing in a very tight range testing uh, this 280 low area you can see the tails on the bottom with some responsive buying uh, you couldn't have predicted you know this much of a you know final candle but that's usually a sign of a uh, a short-term low when the bears run out of gas at a certain level really can't make any more progress certainly a place to get out of shorts depending on your time frame of course uh, when you see that kind of thing we saw it here as well you know testing that 285 area they just couldn't break it and then we got a rally after that so things to look for on your chart uh, IWM same kind of idea a lot of down weeks in a row came right into this uh, uh, 178 ish area took a big look below for the last couple of weeks and and they managed to hold it together if we go to the uh, daily chart I think you can use this 175 area as a pivot if it can hold that and then get above 180 you'll have a downtrend line and the falling 20 to contend with but that would bode well for a long above uh, 180 if you're not long already or you know if it wavers here in the morning remember we'll have a gap up on the open if if this pre-market action holds if you know where we open near 180 or, or wherever we open and they come down and fill the opening gap really quick but hold it that would be a great place to get long if we came back down to the close at 176 where it closed on Friday and they hold that area on that gap fill then that would be an objective place to try a long after that gap has filled uh, with a stop just below you can see that they filled this gap on on Friday so I'll remove that for the future and then depending on how we open this morning we'll drop in a a um, uh, a new gap uh, here here you can see we closed right at at 176 I think that's your pivot for today on the small smaller time frame here's the filled gap so just be watching where we open if they and, and this is always the case it's not just for today do they gap and go higher or do they hesitate come back to fill that opening gap hold it here at 176 and then bounce it higher uh, moving on to fat man uh, Facebook 60 minute chart uh, we came down had a little bounce came back down into this big gap again it made a reach down towards uh, these lows here at let's just call it 185 didn't quite get there uh, little bullish divergence on the chart not a lot but uh, this morning here I think this uh, 195 area is going to be a you know if we gap open higher this 195 will be a decent pivot with 199 and 202 above as your targets uh, Apple's been really heavy uh, weaker than most I think being used as an ATM uh, you know as funds back off of their exposure any kind of fund, any kind of long fund is long Apple as probably their biggest position. So any kind of lightening up that those funds do is going to hit Apple, you know, disproportionately being the highest weighted. I think it's got to get, <coughs> excuse me, I think it's got to get over 140 
before you can see a lot of upside. But that's a nice level there. Again, note the bullish divergence. Lower low, higher low in momentum, higher low in RSI. So I think if uh, Apple can take out 140, you can be long against that level. Tesla, another bad day at the office. I mean, I, I don't know. I think this thing, I think this thing is um, slowly imploding. Uh, came down here to test 650 and held it. I think it's got to get over 700 before you can, uh, before you can uh, do a whole lot with it here in the middle. Who knows which way it can go. And I think of all the stocks out there, you know, if there were to be a bounce, this would be the one that I would be watching really carefully to possibly go the other way. Um, not saying that's a given. Uh, I don't have a position in it. But uh, it's been really, really weak lately with Elon kind of melting down on Twitter and getting a little bit more erratic. Um, it's going to be interesting. I'll just leave it at that. But technically speaking, it's got to recover this prior low. Uh, actually, a couple prior lows. You got a low here and a low here at 700. And I, I think you're, unless you get a move down to 650 that holds where you want to take a shot. I think to get on better technical ground, it's got to get back above uh, 700 to get a real objective long on the thing. Uh, Microsoft has been heavy as well. Note again the bullish divergence, lower low, higher low in momentum, higher low in RSI. That's your bullish divergence. I think if you can get above 254 here, Today, I think that's your pivot point. Above 254, I think you look towards 259, 260 as a target. And then above uh, 260, you can look towards uh, 265, 267 type range as your, um, as your um, upside targets. And remember, we've got the makings here of a double bottom low. Here's that classic W formation. Here's the left side of the W. Here's the middle. And so now we put in a double low, a double bottom low with bullish divergence. That's usually money. Um, that's usually a money setup. And if price were to get above, take out this high of the middle part of the W, then your measured move is going to be from 250 to, let's just call it 265. So that's uh, $15 onto 265 would put you back up towards 280. And then that would be a, a really, really nice rally to participate in uh, if it were to come to fruition. But you've got two thirds of the double bottom setup uh, in place uh, right now. Uh, Amazon also has that uh, uh, double bottom look. Here's the left side, middle part of the W, double bottom, bullish divergence. I think you can be long against uh, 2100. Uh, see what it does here this morning. I think uh, a break above 2200, you would set yourself up nicely for a try at a, at a gap fill here and then come back towards uh, 2400. So that's that on Amazon, Google. Uh, made a lower low. I think you got to get above 2200 here to uh, and use that as your pivot today i think once you recapture these lows if the bounce is for real once you recover that level i think you got uh, a decent chance of 
coming up to 2250 and then 2325 on the upside as initial targets and then 2375 would be my uh, third target up here to get back up towards this range so some decent upside opportunity in Google if it can get above 2200 uh, Netflix really didn't do anything uh, over the last couple of days back up to this 187.50 I think that's your pivot there if you're interested in that if it can pop 187.50 then uh, you got a chance to come up here towards uh, 197.50 and then uh, 210 as your upside targets uh, semis monst monstrous 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 final candle on Friday I mean to to, to go down here you know uh, fill this gap be testing these lows down at 220 and then to finish at 228 that was a super super big candle I think today 228 is your pivot my first target would be 233 and then 236 and then this uh, line here at 240 241 that has been really really important if you go back on the charts uh, rejection here uh, you got a rejection here a rejection here etc uh, this was a fake breakout but if it can hold 228 and things look bullish I like semis long towards uh, 233 and then 236 cruising through arc really quick uh, all of these charts look exactly the same uh, consolidation area over the last week uh, here on arc F it's bouncing toggling between 1750 and 1850 if you got something down towards 1750 you can be long or on a breakout above 1850 of course with this consolidation of a dollar you're looking for uh, 1950 on a breakout and then potentially uh, up towards 21 as a second target and the thing that I I think about with these names there may be a inkling or a or a uh, a bias in these stocks in kind of a dash for trash kind of move where you might see outperformance of the art complex on these bounces because the names have just been destroyed destroyed so much that people want to you know bottom pick kind of thing I think I think these are names you rent. You're not you're not trying to uh, you know say you know the bottoms in kind of thing. I think you just participate in a rally if it comes and see if you get that out performance in Arc uh, Arc G. You can see the same thing toggling between 31 and let's call it 32.75 right up to that level I think if you alarm that today you could get a breakout above 3275 looking for 34 and then up towards uh, the 36 area uh, if it can take out uh, these lows here so uh, potentially nice setup there uh, Art K same thing toggling between 41 and 4350 you get a breakout above 4350 that sticks I think you can get 47 as a first target and then you've got this uh, uh, traffic or these lows here at 47 and if it can take that out then up towards 52 and then wrapping up with arc W you can see the same pattern uh, long consolidation uh, bounded by 56 and 53 I think you just have those levels alarmed you get a breakout above 56 you've got a downtrend line coming in 
towards 60. That lines up really, really well with a $3 trading range. Uh, so you break out of a $3 trading range. That measures up to 59.60 at the downtrend line. Uh, then if it were able to pop that line, then you've got these lows back here at 63. That would be my second target. So 59.60 as a first shot and then uh, 63 as a second shot on the upside. So let's do a little recap here. I think things favor a bounce after, you know, seven, eight weeks, consecutive down weeks. We had the big roll off on options week last week. If you go to the blog post this morning, you'll see uh, whether it's sentiment, whether it's, you know, the fear index, whether it's we looked at percent below the 50 at extreme lows, um, positioning by traders, very low. Um, I think this thing is set up for a bounce, but we got to get evidence. Trade level by level, don't, don't, um, you know, if you take a long, certainly respect your stops. Uh, real skittish market. We've seen some, some fake rips recently be followed by, uh, you know, big fast dips. So stay really flexible, stay light in your positioning. There's not, not an all in moment here for sure, in my opinion. Um, but I am favoring a bounce and I haven't spent much time on it lately, but Oil has been holding up really, really well. Uh, it's up again this morning. Uh, even in these down moves, your refiners, your EMP companies, oil itself is holding up really, really well. I mean, think about oil. It's had everything thrown at it. You know, China lockdowns, uh, uh, rate increases, growth fears, everything. And it, it is hung in there like a champ and actually threatening to break out. And if you go to, you know, a USO chart or a WTI chart, you can see it won't take that much more to give us an open door to 120 back up near the highs. Not a prediction, just saying, uh, technically, looking at the chart, it looks really, really strong. Another sector um, is marine shipping. Uh, let me look at a list here. Uh, I'm just going to rattle off some tickers for you. DSX, uh, GLOP, GNK. Uh, Grin, G-R-I-N, and G-O-G-L look really strong in the marine shipping sector. And if you go to those charts, you'll see that a lot of them are pressing towards breakout territory. I think those marine uh, LPG and oil tanker stocks uh, look really really good and have have not been clipped to an appreciable degree by any of these down swings in the general market so i have uh you know i'm long xle i'm long uh, vlo i'm long a couple of tankers so anyways what i plan to do today is if SPY and QQQ and IWM can, and any of the fat man names can re, can recapture some of the levels that I just spoke of. I plan to get long those on a, 
you know, two to three week basis, maybe, maybe uh, June calls, maybe something a little closer in to try and capture a bounce if it materializes, but nothing, nothing super long term. I mean, why, why buy a bunch of time if you think this is a short term bounce kind of a thing? And if it, if it materializes into something more, then we can roll out our stops and our strikes, harvest the the gains we get on our first position and, and roll those out if it looks like the bounce is uh, starting to have some legs and some uh, more participation to the upside. So anyways, uh, that's the game plan for today. Uh, Please visit the, the blog site this morning. There's a lot of extra information there today that I think uh, would be helpful and supportive of a case for a bounce. But as always, price talks and narratives walk. So uh, we got to see those levels recaptured to the upside. If you're new to the uh, channel, thank you so much for spending some time with me this morning. As you can tell, it's all uh, technically driven with objective trading levels for you to work with on a on a daily basis um, at a certain point you'll come to trust the levels that i give you and that should free up some of your time and your bandwidth to focus on execution and that you know as traders that's where we get paid um, you know executing trades respecting stops uh, keeping losses in check and um, staying in the direction of the trend and letting winners run when they are in fact going our way so if that appeals to you hit the subscribe button the alarm bell uh, give me a thumbs up certainly leave me a comment if there's a stock or a sector you'd like me to cover i'm happy to do that i will either work those in uh, to a daily video or create a separate video just for that I'd be happy to do that uh, and please pass the link along to others in your trading group that would benefit from the work jump over in the show notes you'll find a, a link to the blog site where you can drop in your email address then morning noon or night you will get my intraday advisories observations trade ideas whatever i happen to see and pass along you'll get it right in your email box we'd love to have you and you'll also get an invite to our trading room love to have you in there as well and certainly many thanks to those of you that have uh, uh, stuck around I hope you're benefiting from the work and I hope you're trading well so let's wrap it up there this has been Chris Buss with Traders Profit Compass talk to you next time